الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول وقول الأمر منكم and I was a reminder for myself and Abd Kalaji said da'if or miskeen or zalim or jahal <coughs> but for the grace of Allah Zawajal that we are still in existence. <coughs> Alhamdulillah that Allah Zawajal granted for us to enter into the holy month of Muharram and Bab Tawbah, the gate of uh, repentance, the gate of maghfirah and forgiveness in which Surah Tawbah is its guide, is the, the entryway for the reality of the Qur'an to dress the servant and bring them towards the heart and reality of Islam, the heart and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad <coughs> Alhamdulillah that Bab Tawbah and Surat Tawbah has no Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem that in this surah it's Bismillah Allahu Akbar that Allah as a isharat and sign for this path and this reality that the surah is guiding us and not starting with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem that in this surah is a guide that entered this ocean of maqfidah and forgiveness. Ask Allah's forgiveness for the bad character and continuously sacrifice oneself for that badness. Means that to, to, to not ask Allah that, let me to continue that out of your mercy but Ya Rabbi grant me that I repent from badness and bad character and that I seek a path and pilgrimage towards your oceans of rida and satisfaction, God's forgiveness and satisfaction, the immensity of that ocean, the blessings of those oceans and that is the, the gate of tawbah and that we ask Allah to dress us from the secret of Holy Qur'an, the secret of Surat al-Tawbah and to draw near into that ocean of reality and the oceans of repentance. Nine is an ocean of submission. This gate is a gate in which to submit oneself and to live a life. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh On a path of effacing, that to efface oneself that I'm nothing Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, no matter what you bestow upon me that I'm nothing and that I ask to enter into this ocean and this reality. It has to do with the reality of entering into a wave reality. That all my life I spent in my seed and in my form, I'm asking Ya Rabbi grant me access to the reality of the grave, the reality of the dirt in which my seed, my being must enter into a cave, into the dirt, into the ocean of submission to be nothing and that to leave my particle existence and enter into my wave reality. And this is the, the month of that entrance for this journey that Ya Rabbi let me to be nothing and to enter into that way and into that ocean. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensity of the opening of Muharram and the immensity of the lights of Muharram that in these next ten days, nine days all the way up to the tenth of Muharram and Ashura 
it's an immense ocean of salvation that Sayyidina Adam came onto this earth and had to repent for 40 years for the sins that he carried of creation and the sins of all the souls that would be coming from Adam and Eve as a carrier that taking us from our paradise reality onto our journey onto the earth. So it means the immensity of every nation and the eternal repentance that Allah points out for us our character, our character defects and our life is a life of repentance. Sayyidina Nuh comes to us because his salvation was on Ashura and in an eternal journey teaches us our life is about testing. The soul can only be achieved and the reality of the souls can only be achieved by imtihan. Because without testing in life there's no development for the soul. So it means every test that's coming it's from Allah's love to build the reality of the soul. Because Allah doesn't care for the ocean of uh, physicality. What Allah cares for is the oceans of eternity. So alhamdulillah that Sayyidina Nuh comes and reminds because every ashura each of these latayfs have to have an opening. Means that Sayyidina Adam it means when we're meditating, contemplating Sayyidina Adam is praying and inspiring within our hearts that make this the year in which Allah accepts your repentance, accepts your character, your character defects, your flaws and that these bad characteristics to leave and good characteristics that Allah is pleased with to be dressed upon the servant. Then the servant in one year will have a dress and inspiration from Sayyidina Nuh because this is a perpetual journey. That Noah comes and inspires that struggle for your faith. For 40 years I built a ship where there was no water. I took the cursings of my community who defiled me and my mission and mocked me all my life. Until one day Allah sent a flood and then my faith became pure. Means building a ship where there is no water on top of a mountain to prove to people one day a flood will come and will fill this whole area, this boat will be sailing. So means our life is about testing. What people don't understand it's not for them, my grave only fits myself. So I have to do what Allah is calling upon me and that becomes a life of testing, a life of trying to satisfy Allah and His Rasul and not people. Satisfaction of people doesn't get you into heaven and doesn't benefit the grave. This is the satisfaction of Allah and the perfection of character. Sayyidina Nuh then inspires and in one year inshaAllah Allah inspired and Sayyidina Ibrahim comes into our existence and begins to inspire within ourselves that the najat and salvation of a fire was granted to me. That when Nimrod threw me into a fire Allah saved me, Qul Ya Nahrukuni Bardan wa Salaman ala Ibrahim. And that our life is about continuous fire of dunya being cast upon us. And this is uh, an important point that Sayyidina Ibrahim inspire within the heart, قُلْ يَا نَحْرُكُنِ بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَنَ Ibrahim. That we are an energy being <clears throat> and that we are a subtle energy being. And the more that we practice our practices, the more subtle our energy becomes. And you know the subtlety by the character. They can laugh and cry based on inspirations of energy. And at the same time the amount of negative energy that being cast upon them means in our life 
in this ocean of reality begins to open the subtlety of energy. And that's when people whom are doing their spiritual practices they have to be cautious. When they're cautious they have to understand that everywhere they go in life they are picking up energies. And these energies are being thrown onto other people. If they stay upon the self means they come onto the person, this energy, you go somewhere you pick up a negative energy, you go another place you pick up an, an, another energy. When they stay upon the self these negative energies can make to many different sicknesses, many different difficulties. And then the practices, the wudu, the zikr, the salah, the meditation, all of those are to wash away. So it means that when you pick up a negative energy or something or somewhere you've gone that had negative energies, immediately you have to go home when you arrive home and to wash. Wash the negative energies off, wash all of these different burdens of dunya off. If it stays upon yourself it causes many difficulties and the worst is if it doesn't stay upon the self but it's cast within the home and to loved ones. Especially the younger whom are more subtle like a sponge and they can carry the energies. Or the more pious they can pick up those energies and be affected by them. So me and Sayyidina Ibrahim begins to teach us that when we're cast into these oceans of fire means our whole world is filled with fire. And that this energy that comes not to let it to burn and absorb the person but to dispel and disperse that fire. قُلْ يَا نَهْرُ كُنِي بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا That the fire is going to be thrown, there's no way to stop it, we live on dunya. But the ability to immediately take the fire of anger and energies and begin to extinguish it. That becomes the practices of wudu, washing, meditating, contemplating and now take this fire and bring it down. Not to let it to keep going and festering and keep talking, keep texting, keep making everything to be out of control. Learn to take a fire and bring it and bring it down. So like you see these examples where all of a sudden somebody is cooking in their kitchen, they have a fire, an oil fire. And they're sitting there astonished that screaming, yelling, fire, fire and then they make it worse and put it under water and it explodes because an oil fire with water immediately disperses everywhere. And that's our life is that to take a situation to be trained, the anger will come but to control it and kill the fire, swallow it. As if you have a fire extinguisher in which you can throw it out and immediately extinguish and bring that fire down. And that's with the training, the water, the meditation, the contemplation, the zikr, the salawats, all of that. Because at this opening at that level the student is being trained on how to contain fire, how to contain qadab and anger. Doesn't mean they don't get angry, they get very angry but do they burn? from it is something different. Dunya you see them get angry, they stay angry. They even begin to fester in their anger and begin to act out on their anger with rage, their color changes, <coughs> everything. Sayyidina Musa salam comes and begins to teach that if we pass these and we take the dressing and the reality of these openings in ashura, each ashura Allah is developing the soul of that insan, that person each time more and more until Sayyidina Musa comes and begins to inspire that I was given the promised land and that Allah took me from one reality and parted an ocean to take me to the promised land means to, to leave our physical world's understanding and to be the, uh, a darvish in dunya, so much into dunya that Allah accepts their sincerity of struggle and they begin to enter into the oceans of malakut in which the dunya parts its way 
for the servant to begin to have their connection with malakut. It doesn't just come because somebody wants it but Allah is testing, did you repent? Did you understand your path is about a continuous struggle? We look back in our life and think, am I always repenting? Like Sayyidina Adam If Sayyidina Adam is repenting for 40 years, imagine we have to repent five lifetimes. So are we asking istighfar all the time, all the time? That's what we said, all day long make istighfar. And then in the middle of the day begin making salawat. You say, why I have to repent? Uh, ask yourself why you have to repent. Why Sayyidina Adam is repenting for 40 years? And if you think that you don't have to repent, already shaitan has tackled you and taken you out of the game. Then we come and say, then, am I struggling? Do I have a ship like Sayyidina Anu in my life? Do I have an issue in my life that I'm continuously struggling to build my soul? If not, then we should have and we should be in that condition that I should be struggling to perfect my faith, not accommodating myself and others but to struggle to keep my faith and my practices. And Sayyidina Ibrahim come and said, are you struggling with fire? Means are they ability to cast something onto you and you have the training in which to take it and begin to suffocate? You're a trained fireman. Doesn't mean you're perfected and don't get angry. No, no, they get very angry because of the subtlety of energy and they see the inappropriateness of people's character. And if they picked up negative energies they'll have a fierce amount of negativity coming upon them. But the training was not, he wasn't going to be not thrown into fire but he's thrown deep into a fire but has to have the ability of qul ya nahru kun ibadan wa salam and say to the fire, be cool and peaceful and they have the ability to bring that fire down. Sayyidina Musa says, if you did that and you achieve that, Allah will open for you the Promised Land. Means that you'll live a life of dunya but the parting of your chest and the parting of the water of reality begins to open for the servant to reach to their malakut, to reach into the domain of the heavenly realm in which the heavenly realm begins to nourish them, bless them, dress them. And these are all ashura, that's why every ashura is immensely important. That's why then the only are teaching us to have qurban, to do good actions, to do good deeds. Fasting is the most recommended during the 10 days and the last day, the ninth day for ashura. Immensity of these lights and these blessings that can be achieved through siyam and fasting means and good deeds, good character, the qurban to take away our deficiencies of what we did not achieve. Just the same reality of the qurban of hajj is that Allah takes with a tremendous ransom, means that, I know where you did not reach of that reality that with that qurban that Allah take away the difficulty and the imperfection and grant us the lights of that ashura, grant us the reality of that ashura. Whether it's the tawbah, whether it's the iman, whether it's the qadab, the anger and the fire and Sayyidina Musa teaching then Allah open the paradise oceans and malakut to begin to dress the servant. At that time from the dress of the servant Sayyidina Isa begins to inspire the heart. That as this dunya was coming after me Allah raised me into the heavens on the 10th of Muharram. I mean Sayyidina Isa was saved from the hands of persecution and was raised to Allah's Divinely Presence and he was not harmed. That raising was ashura and that he comes and inspires that that heavenly kingdom Allah will begin to train the soul, will begin the opening for the training of the soul. Allah doesn't need to open it, Allah opens the permission and the servant begins to train in the release of their soul. That at any moment then their meditation, their tafakkur and their contemplation Allah give a permission for the soul to become subtle and to raise itself into the heavenly realm and the malakut. 
while they are alive and their physicality is conscious, their soul is very subtle and its energy and its movement is continuously moving within the malakut and the Divinely Heavenly realm inshaAllah. And from that inspiration when they're moving back and forth, moving into these realities and their life is about the subtlety of their soul, then Sayyidina Muhammad comes with the grand intercession that the soul that is coming and going, the soul now being presented to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that begin to annihilate them, dress them, bless them and enter them into the oceans of al-Baqa in which Allah when Prophet is the black hole of all realities, al-Mahi, the one whom destroys everything to bring it into nothingness. And when it enters into the reality of Prophet that it enters into the oceans of nothingness. As a result of entering into that reality Prophet will take that reality and send it towards the Divinely oceans of Al-Baqa in which it resurrects into its reality. We said that that is witnessed every day on this earth when every seedling enters the soil because the soil represents the Muhammadan reality. Every seed that Allah has made all this creation as an example of these haqqaiqs. Every seed that enters the soil, the soil's job is al-mahi, is the destroyer of the form, destroyer of everything. As a result is also the one whom resurrects everything in Allah's beautific oceans. Means as soon as the seed goes into the soil, it changes its reality. Although it submitted everything, it went into the soil and then something new will appear. Means even the soul that reaches its perfection will enter into the Muhammadan haqqaiq. When it enters into the Muhammadan haqqaiq again become nothing. And then only at that ocean of nothingness Prophet to bring it into the oceans of baqa and Allah resurrect it into the ocean of its reality. Sayyidina Musa asked, Ya Rabbi let me see you and took a journey to see his Lord and whom he saw on our nat is asking, ask Musa who he saw. Means when he came to the reality of Mahi, to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah said, we sent from our glory for Sayyidina Musa to see. As he saw the presence and reality of Prophet what happened? Complete fana, completely annihilated. Whatever his risalat and title all of it is destroyed. Think of it like in these action movies you see a form and the one whom destroys all form and become like dust. Even its light becomes nothing in the presence of Prophet That's the reality of a black hole is that it takes and sends back no color, no existence. Even in the world of light is annihilated. The form was annihilated long ago but even when the light is entering into the, the blackness of that reality Ahlul Bayt when they seen in the heart of vision it's all in black because they represent the oceans of annihilation. When these souls begin to move towards that blackness they begin to disappear. They are being completely annihilated and become something completely, I wish that I was something non-existent. Only within the reality of Prophet will bring that into the Divinely oceans of Allah in which they are resurrected and oceans of baqa and brought back into a new reality in which Allah had wanted for that servant. One that they annihilated physicality and then even their soul went into an ocean of annihilation and that Prophet within his being brings them into their true reality. 
once entered into the Muhammadan haqqaiq. Where all the Prophets had to on Isra, on Rajab, we celebrated the Isra, the movement of Prophet before the ascension into the heavens. The Isra was for all the Prophets of Allah to achieve that reality. That to pray behind Sayyidina Muhammad and in tahiyyat to give the salams to Prophet and testify that La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah immediately to vanish within the reality of Prophet to be completely annihilated in the Muhammadan light in which they can reach their reality from the dress of the Muhammadan light inshaAllah. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with the immensity of these understandings, the immensity of Ashura, Shanura, the openings of lights and blessings and that uh, Prophet intercede for us that wherever we're falling short to make an intercession for us and present us pure and purified to Allah's Divinely Presence and that awliyaullah support us with the madad and support, the nazar, the inspirations and insharat fi samahi wa fil ard under the loving guidance of the holy companions and Ahlul Bayt and that their love to wash us and to nourish us, to feed us and to dress us. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.